Okay, the final part. The final part of this proof, addressing the last remaining bit of the statement of the extension theorem, the Bag extension theorem, that the external measure is in fact sigma additive on the sigma algebra of all measurable subsets. Again, the statement here is like this: if I have a sequence of measurable subsets, which is which is a pairwise disjoint sequence, and such that the union of this sequence. Actually, I don't have to say such that, because this is a sigma algebra, the union of this sequence always be here. But so, the such such that refers only to the fact that this is a pairwise disjoint sequence. Then, the external measure of the A will be the sum, exactly the sum, of the individual external measures. Again, I put here the question mark to emphasize the fact this is a content of the proof. Remember that this inequality we have like for free because we know that the external measure is a semi-additive thing. So our job is to show this inequality. That's the inequality which is under question mark in effect. This is the inequality which is under the question mark in effect. Uh, and what I'm going to do actually to prove this inequality, I prove like a general fact which shows, which can be used on, on many other occasions, on many other similar occasions, which I will call lemma. And it goes like this if I have a couple, a rem, a ring, and a measure on this ring, such that this measure is semi additive, and that's the setting for it, that's the ring, it's actually sigma algebra. And that's the measure on it. We proved it is in fact measure in the proper sense of it. And we know this measure is sigma, a semi-additive. We know this for free. It's like a property of the external measure. If I have these two things in general con context, ring, and of general context of a ring and a measure. Here, of course, when I say this is a semi-ring, I, I say like we have a, we have this sequence from this ring with the extra condition that the union of this one's also in the ring. Then the measure like this will be sigma additive. The measure like this will be sigma additive. Again, if I have a ring with a measure, a ring with a measure, any ring with any measure, with the extra property the measure is semi-additive, in this, that, that's what I mean by that, then the measure will be sigma additive right away. Is a proof. I take the sequence of elements in Rn such that the disjoint union is in R, and this time I have to say such that because R is a ring, not necessarily closed under countable unions. So it's a pairwise disjoint uh, sequence such that its union is in R. Then I can make the following sequence of observations. If I take, I did something like this already before, but I'll just make it explicit again as in, the, in the context of this lemma. If I take partial unions of these sets, of this set, of this sequence A, and these partial unions will be a subsets in this A. Now I can say that the, if I take this sum, partial sum of individual measures like this, because M is a measure and has a finite sum, it will be measure of this finite union. Now the measure of this finite union will be less than the measure of A, because we have this subset relation, and that's a finite number, because this A belongs to R, and we have a measure which define on this ring R. So what we have, we have that we have, we see that we have partial sums, uniformly bounded by some number, which ensures that this series converges, and in fact not only converges, the complete sum of this series will also be less than this number m of a, and that's the opposite inequality to this semi-additivity inequality. And that's why in fact we have equality here, that's why we have, in fact we have sigma additive measure. And that finishes the proof of the lemma and also finishes the proof of the claim that external measure will be sigma additive 
on this sigma algebra f that finishes the proof of this opposite inequality.